Well, good morning. It's a Sunday and it's like a snow day today. So we got some snow overnight. How much snow did we get? Uh, maybe an inch and a half, two inches. That oh, that's it. Okay, so about an inch and a half to two inches of snow. Kind of drifty, oh sort of uh, grainy kind of snow, it yes. seems like. But anyway, um, yeah, we got home from church and Warren was like, I feel like cooking. And if he wants to cook, I might as well do some too. So he was making popcorn balls and now he's got chocolate chip cookies going. And um, hello, Joe. <laughs> hello, Tana. And I decided to make some like pizza rolls. So that's just pizza dough and, and yeah. that's it. Some marinara sauce oh. and cheese. And I'm going to let those rise until Warren's done with his cookies. Look at these. And I'm gonna get those in, get my mess cleaned up, and we want to get outside today at some point. Maybe get on the snowmobile. Merry, Merry Christmas, Uncle Mike. <laughs> Does it look like Christmas outside? So at some point we do want to get outside, get on the snowmobile. Well, obviously do do some shoveling. shoveling. Trying to figure out who's gonna do the shoveling today, but um. All right, so these are out of the oven now. I did have these in for probably 400 degrees, and I think I said it 15 minutes and then another 10 so like 25 minutes i've got a little tiny tiny bit of melted butter and I'm just put a little bit of garlic salt in there and then school is all done and Peter decided that he wanted to do some baking. What are you baking today, Peter? Oh. Hi, Joe. We'll get to you in just a sec. I'm making Cut. sugar, like sugar cookies, but with a uh, chocolate kiss in them. Okay. Just, okay. Just don't and just for a time stamp on all of these, Peter is in his green cast, the first cast. And yesterday we had kind of some disappointing news he has to go in and have pins put in and that's going to happen tomorrow so he is just having as much fun as he possibly can today right mm -hmm. awesome right. Mm -hmm. and maria's helping him out uh -huh. and oh um, my i can't wait for tomorrow because before he leaves we're going to be making our um friday school valentine yes you are going to and joe is in the kitchen too what are you going to do joe and then it's do it do it do it do it do it um Stuart is, Stuart is the M&M's cookies. Oh, you're waiting for Peter to make M&M cookies? <laughs> yes, delicious. Uh, you're going to be waiting a long time. He's making um, mm. Hershey Kiss cake cookies today. Uh, tastes good. I know. Nom, 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 nom. I'm going to spend some time doing dishes while they're in the nom, kitchen. Nom, 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 nom. Tonight's supper is going to be a really easy one to put together. It is going to take some time in the oven though. I'm making a sheet pan dinner and it is going to be chicken legs with roasted vegetables. So I'm just getting started here by cutting my potatoes into nice small pieces. to be fairly small because I want them to cook well and get kind of a nice crispness to them as the chicken bakes. And chicken legs, you know, those are going to bake a little faster than, well, like some bigger cuts of meat. There's only five of us here for supper tonight. It'll just be Warren and me and the three youngest. And so I'm not making a huge, huge supper tonight. This was just six small potatoes. I guess small to medium. Now that I get them cut up, it's actually looking like a lot. <laughs> I'm also going to throw in some baby carrots. 
but I'm going to dry them off first. I like to use just a just a dish towel. I'm not going to do too many carrots because the kids are not big on roasted carrots. I want them to have at least, you know, I want there to be one for each of them. And then Warren and I will want some roasted carrots here. I put eight. I think if I counted right, I have eight chicken legs in here. And then in this marinade here. So I did make a chicken marinade a few weeks back already. It was so good. It started with um, mayo or Miracle Whip, something like that and Italian dressing and seasoning. It was just so good. So I wanted to do this tonight. This is just about a quarter cup of mayo and it's some melted butter and some oil and garlic cloves and then some parsley. I'm gonna pour that over everything here. That marinade <laughs> smells really, really, really good very garlicky. I actually made the marinade up earlier in the day so that the garlic would have some time to really kind of seep into the mayo. And yeah, it smells really good. So I'm just going to get this all. And now that I think about it, I could have actually done this up in advance this morning when I had a few minutes. And now, and then I would be all ready to go, but I did it. And the one thing with the sheet pan dinner is you want to try to get things that cook at about the same, um, you know, like at the same time. I have a seasoning mix over here that I also put together this morning. This is just salt, pepper, chili powder, and ground paprika. And I'm kind of thinking, I know I'm going to do it right now. Um, I just bought... A seasoning blend from Aldi. I'm sorry, I don't have this light on here. There we go, that's so much better, I think. Um, I had just bought this a couple nights ago, actually last night, I think. I'm going to put some of that into this blend as well. The kids are on a Paw Patrol kick tonight. put quite a bit in. There we go. That's going to be really good in there, I think. I know that I've said this before, and when you are um, like just learning to cook or even trying to expand your cooking skills, one of the things I can say is find some ways that you like cooking. Like Really just kind of find a technique that you really like, and then change the flavors from there. So once I found this mayo uh, marinade that first time, I thought, I'm just gonna change it up. It like changes the meal, but you already know how to cook it. Oh, oh that's good. Learn they all do about, like every do they? Day. Is it, oh, okay. I wondered if it was like the same thing, but no, it's not the same. No. So I'm just going to get this all spread out as much in a single file, single file, <laughs> single layer as I can. I'm always saying that to the kids when we're shopping. Single file, single file. We can't take up the whole aisle. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is just sprinkle over the seasonings. Maybe I'll use this. And I want to get plenty of seasoning on the chicken. Okay, so that is it. That's what sheet pan dinner looks like. I'm going to put this in. I'm first going to set my timer for 50 minutes. I'll come back and see if it needs to go a little bit longer. So this is how everything is looking. This was in for 50 minutes, completely done. Um, then I just toasted up in the oven under the broiler and kind of burnt them. <laughs> Some buns, 
And it's just a nice way to use up buns if you have them, butter it, toast it up a little bit. Sometimes um, I've put garlic salt on them before, like if we're having um, more of a spaghetti or something like that. Anyway, this is just buttered. Yes, Dr. Joe. And then we're just having a little bit of um, canned fruit. So we have some peaches and fruit cocktail. And that's really it. So it's nothing too fancy, but hopefully it should be tasty. Okay, it's the next night for supper here, and what we're going to do, maybe it's not the next night, but anyway, it's the next day I'm filming. And what we're gonna do here tonight is have some simple chicken noodle soup. It is, the temperature has been dropping all day. It's about 12 right now. Uh, tomorrow is supposed to be a high of, I think, zero. And so I thought this was just the perfect thing to make. I'm gonna make a great big pot. This is so easy to do. I actually already had cooked up some chicken. This was gonna be for a chicken salad recipe, but I just wasn't feeling that tonight. I wanted something that was nice and hot and um, was gonna warm us up. So I have this chicken out. I'm just gonna cut this bag off because it's still, like it's thawed here, but frozen inside. Um, and I just have some water. This is my 12 quart um, stock pot and I have it a little over half full. I put some Knorr chicken seasoning in here. I just poured a little bit later. I will taste it, see how it is. But I'm just gonna get the chicken in. And when I say this is gonna be simple, I really mean it. I'm gonna cut up a little bit of onion, a whole lot of carrots, a whole lot of celery. We're gonna put all of that in there. And then hopefully I can get a hold of Warren. He actually is in town because I can't find the egg noodles. Like, <laughs> even Peter's like, I know you bought them. And the pantry is only so big and we're searching and we cannot find the egg noodles. So I'm trying to think if we ate them up. But anyway, I'm hoping I can get a hold of Warren. He'll pick up some egg noodles. We'll throw those in and that is going to be supper. I'll probably maybe make some one hour bread here in just a second. But it's just going to be a really easy supper here for tonight. It's Friday night. Shark Tank is on. Hopefully, I didn't, I didn't check. But we, I usually like to sit down and watch that. It's kind of just like like one time where I'm like, okay, even though it's still seven o'clock at night, I'm still gonna just kind of veg out. <laughs> okay, so the soup is completely, like basically done here, um, except we're just gonna wait for Warren to bring some egg noodles because I can't find them. And next up, what I'm going to do, so next up what I'm going to do here is just put together really quick some 60-minute white bread. And so I have in my bowl two cups of flour, a tablespoon of sugar. I'm just about to put in, if I can do this, one teaspoon of salt. And then I'm going to put in two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. So there's two teaspoons and then here's my quarter teaspoon. And this is the rapid rise yeast. I just think that that works best rather than just like your traditional yeast for this recipe because it is kind of one of those quick bread recipes. I don't mean quick bread, it is a yeast bread, but I'm just saying it's supposed to happen all in under an hour. All right, so I'm just gonna get that all stirred up really well. And then I'm going to warm up 3 fourths cup of water with 1 fourth cup milk and two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna get that warmed up so it's hot to touch, but not too hot. Okay, so here's my hot water, milk, and butter. I don't know why that's not focusing. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, I am able to touch it with my finger, but it is, it is quite warm. Okay, I stirred it up until it looked like this. That only took about one minute to get it looking like that. I. I do have one extra cup of flour reserved, and I will use that um, to work into this as I need it. So let's get going on that. So I'm just gonna keep on working this basically until I get the flour worked in and it just, the dough feels, you know, I don't want it to be rock hard. You want it to be a nice soft dough. I usually end up working this until I have probably at least half of this flour worked into it. It's a pretty dry day, so I feel like I'm probably not gonna need a ton of flour today. 
Okay, to me today this feels, you know, I just wish that I could give you guys, <laughs> you know, show you what, or try to explain to you how this feels. Um, yeah, it feels, mm, it's starting to get just a little bit sticky. I'm just going to keep on going, I guess. So if I'm in a time crunch, which is, you know, when you would make this bread, when you're in a little bit of a time crunch, um, I do like to put it into two smaller loaf pans. There, okay. I'm just going to kind of form my loaf here. I'm going to just kind of roll it in my hand. Kind of rolling in the undersides. Put that loaf in there. I'm going to set these two loaves uh, on top of the stove, cover them in a dish towel, and let them rise for a, probably about 20 minutes or so. Okay, so I have a pan with hot, as hot as I could get my tap water, and I'm just putting these two loaf pans in here. I'm going to cover them with this dish towel here and then let them rise. Ooh, it took geez. a little bit longer for... <laughs> the camera showing <laughs> Those are from Amber. Oh, heck yeah, I could wear these. <laughs> like, actually. All right, so anyway, I had this in for at least 30 to 35 minutes in, I actually put it in the oven on like 175, 175 degrees, because it was just not rising on the on the stove top here, because I think it's just a little too chilly. Uh, anyway, okay, I think it's risen nicely, and I'm just waiting for the oven to get up to 400 degrees. As soon as it comes up to 400 degrees, I'm gonna pop it in the oven and bake it for about 20 to 25 minutes. So if you can wait and let the bread cool a little bit, that really is the best because otherwise if you cut bread that's a little too hot, sometimes it gets a little bit um, like gummy a little bit in the center. Any, I don't even know if that's the right way to explain it. But anyway, it is best if you let bread cool, but we're not going to let it cool because we're hungry. We want to eat. We're going to put some butter on this. That's going to melt up nicely. It's always good when it's warm. And that is going to be supper here tonight. So hello again. It is Sunday now. It's actually Super Bowl Sunday, which puts it at February 7th. So um, yeah, I'm wearing this little outfit that I got from Belle Lily. They actually uh, sent me a box to do an unboxing and you guys may have seen that earlier in this video or it may be in a different video I'm not exactly sure how it's all gonna go. Anyway, I'm wearing the lounge outfit today. We went in the hot tub uh, Like much later after church. I was getting cookbooks packaged and things like that And then we went in the hot tub and afterwards. I'm like why put my skirt back on? Let's just wear lounge clothes. It's a Super Bowl tonight We're just gonna be sitting around doing that. But before that we're making food. So earlier today, I did start getting ready um, making potato salad. So this is just the recipe that I grew up with. This is how my mom made potato salad. Well, let me preface it by she never made a batch this small, and I'm an only child. <laughs> that sounds crazy. But uh, I just grew up in a um, extended family of potato salad lovers. My aunts, my uncles, probably a lot of my cousins as, you know, most of us as we got to be teenagers, we really liked it. I actually remember when we'd have like family gatherings and things like that and my aunts would come from out of town. I remember my mom and my aunts staying up really, really late into the night, like talking and, and everything. And I remember at midnight, they would get the potato salad out. That's how much they love it. It's like a midnight snack. Okay, so what I did here is I have, let me insert some footage here so you guys can see it. But what I have here, this is from earlier today. I have a half of a small to medium onion, uh, very finely diced. I have three ribs of celery, again, finely diced. And I have six radishes uh, quartered and then sliced. On top of that, I put 10 hard boiled eggs. And then I have nine small to medium 
red potatoes. I boiled those with the skin on, let them cool until I could handle them, then peeled the skin off. This is what it looks like right now. And then I'm, now I'm just gonna make up the sauce, which is really the easiest thing in the whole world. Okay, so what I have here is just regular Miracle Whip. It really is important to use the Miracle Whip brand. I have tried just um, whipped salad dressing and it just doesn't have the right flavor. So go with the Miracle Whip brand and then I just put it in here and I have a little bit of milk. Don't tell my mom, she never did that, but I do like it to be just a little bit, um, just a little bit more liquidy. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper to this and that is it. Um, yeah, that's it. I mean, seriously, that is what we do. And we have, like, my mom has been making potato salad forever and ever and ever, and everybody always says, Suzanne's potato salad is the best. So I am uh, trying to make it the best I can to be like hers, except for the addition of a little milk. Now this amount of Miracle Whip, which is about a cup and a half, might not be quite enough, but I have at times accidentally put too much in, so uh, I do have about another third of a cup in my container. I may be adding that. We'll just have to see how it goes. Whoops. <laughs> Okay, that is the finished product. And I will say that if you are like going to serve this at a picnic or at some kind of gathering, it really is nicest to mix it in one bowl, transfer it to another bowl so you don't kind of have all this, this look around the edge. And then you can either, whoops, now that the phone is not ringing, <laughs> I can finish this. So like I was saying, it is best if you want to, not, I mean, it's not best, but it does look nicer if you're gonna serve it up to put it into a fresh bowl so it doesn't have kind of all that like stirring edges or at the very least what I'm gonna do here tonight since it really is just us, I'm just gonna clean up the edge and then um, call it good. I do want to move on with some other food because let's see, it's quarter after four and I think the game might start around five or 5.30. So what I'm gonna do is get some ribs into the oven for tonight. They're just those pre-cooked, pre-seasoned ones. I picked them up at Aldi. They had three packages left and they had them marked down. So I thought I'm just gonna grab all three really quick because I can actually get those for not, I mean, it's about the same price as if I buy the fresh ribs and then make the sauce and everything. So I just did this for, for tonight, something kind of special and easy on me. And then also I brought up a, a two pound package of ground venison and I'm going to make some blue ribbon beef nachos here tonight because I know that uh, the kids are gonna rather have, will rather have that than have the ribs, which is fine because then there's more for Warren and me. So, okay, I'm not sure Sam might be here I'm not really sure. He's at a friend's right now and they're all trying to decide if they're going to uh, pick friends up and go back to the one friend's house or if some of them are going to come here. They don't really know. He texted before wondering what was happening, which I think that meant, is there going to be food involved? And now I think they're going to compare what's happening in all the houses and see which one they want to stay at. So anyway, we'll see what happens with that. So I have two pounds of ground venison in, I'll just turn it around. <laughs> in my Dutch oven here and I did um, dice up I'd say a small to medium onion and then from there what I would normally do is put in a can of refried beans I searched and searched I could not find refried beans so we're just gonna go with chili beans tonight um, I know I could probably just quick run these through like a blender sort of turn them into refried beans but I'm not going to take the time tonight to do that and then I do have a jar of um, salsa here I'm going to put the whole entire jar of salsa in okay. Maria is waiting patiently basically patiently to uh, make some frosting because she had brought home a book from the library and it has recipes right it's like a cartoon about it's a girl. It's called the bake sale, and it's about yep. like, it's like food that you <laughs> can talk, and there's a cupcake, and he owns a bake sale, and at the end, well, he makes a bunch of recipes, and at the end, it shows all the recipes he makes, 
and how to make them, and we're making cupcakes. Yes, here they are. These are the vanilla cupcakes, and then we're going to make some vanilla frosting. With pink food coloring. Yes, so we're gonna follow the recipe right in the book, which is different than the normal, like, birthday cake frosting that I would make. But she wants to make the one that's in the book, so we're gonna go with it, and yeah, that should be fun. So as soon as I get this done, honey, we'll get to that, okay? okay. All right, so this is what the uh, blue ribbon, I mean, we call blue ribbon, blue ribbon beef nachos, but they're actually venison. I'm gonna throw in two tablespoons of chili powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and then a little tiny bit of shredded cheddar cheese, just like a little tiny handful, and then just let this simmer away, and then we'll just serve this up with chips and more cheese and all that good stuff. Hi there, so it is the next day, time for supper again. And what I'm going to do tonight is just have a whole bunch of leftovers. So I did make chicken noodle soup. That was on Saturday and we, or was that on Friday night? I don't really remember. But anyway, we have just a smidge of chicken noodle soup left. We also have some ribs left from yesterday and we have just a little bit of potato salad. Yeah, I was right, Sam does not like it so it's just Warren and I and we are eating our fill. He even put um, potato salad on my plate with my eggs for breakfast. I'm like, ooh, that's a lot of eggs today. So anyway, I also had just a little bit of frozen shrimp left as well and so I have that thawing here. I was just um, like spraying cold water over it to thaw and I'm going to make some garlic butter shrimp and then we can serve that over spaghetti. So I just put some noodles in here, just regular old spaghetti from Aldi and I'm bringing that to a boil. This is where the soup is. I'm gonna bring out those ribs and get those in the microwave to warm up. And that's really gonna be supper. There's gonna be something here that everybody likes tonight. I think Sam will be getting home a little later tonight. Uh, so it's really just gonna be Warren and me and Joseph Peter Maria for um, like right at the supper hour and then Sam will get home a little bit later and so he hasn't had any of the ribs yet so we might actually save those ribs for him. It's just hard to say. So that's going to be supper here tonight. Really, really easy. Um, let me just run you through what I'm going to do to make the garlic butter shrimp. I have my cast iron over here. I'm going to get this heating on a pretty high temp. Um, my gas stove is really hot so High for this could be like even three or four, it could be pretty high. I'm gonna melt some butter in there. As soon as it's nice and melted, but not brown yet, I am going to put in some minced garlic, just the kind from the jar from the store. And um, as soon as I can start to smell that garlic, I'm gonna drop in the shrimp. And when the shrimp turn, you know, that opaque, they get kind of that creamy, pinkish, ivory kind of color. As soon as that happens, I'm gonna take them off the heat and we'll just serve those on top of the spaghetti. I also had two oranges left, so I did just cut those into little orange smiles. I threw out a sleeve of saltine crackers on the table and some butter, and I think with all of that, we're gonna be just fine for supper tonight. I also wanted to just bring your attention to uh, a playlist that I found, I, I think it's called a playlist, whatever, on YouTube, and it is called Relaxing Ukulele Music. The little thumbnail is kind of like a turquoise, color turquoise aqua type color and it says hawaii on it or something that new boombox that i had gotten more and it has bluetooth capabilities so i can just put my phone on and put it on that relaxing ukulele music and you almost feel like you're in hawaii for just a second until you look outside we have a pretty big snow hill out there and I was laughing the other day because they were telling us, we were watching the weather, the temperatures, you know, for the week, were, it was just looking like a number line. It was like negative one, zero, one, two, three. So, and they were calling that a little bit of a warm up. They're like, we're gonna have a slow warm up. So anyway, right now it's about two. So it seems a little warmer than they were expecting for today. It is the next night, it's supper time here. And let me just show you what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do tonight is I have one of these carving hams. I have had it for quite some time and just, I don't know, different turns of events and um, I, I, didn't, I never made it. So I'm finally putting that in tonight because Warren saw it in the fridge. He's like, you know, well, let's have that ham. So why not? Let's have the ham. So we're gonna do ham. I have a couple cans of mandarin oranges here that I'm gonna open up. I have five red potatoes. And so I'm going to uh, slice these up and I'm gonna fry those. Starting from raw, it is gonna take a little bit longer, but that's okay. The ham has to go in for about 35 to 40 minutes. And so I'll have plenty of time to get those done. And then I also brought out broccoli. 
from the freezer and I have that all thawed and so I'm just going to kind of steam that up and get that nice and hot. It's pretty soft and so I think just steaming it really quick is going to get that really good. We'll serve that with some butter and salt and the potatoes, of course, butter and salt. Everything is better with butter and salt and pepper. So that's what we're going to be doing here for tonight's supper. doesn't say to do this but I am going to put over just a little bit of water into here cover it I'm going to put it into the oven at 350 degrees for like I said about 35 or 40 minutes basically until it's just nice and hot mm -hmm. how much do you like ham Maria 100%. Yeah, you like ham a lot, don't you? Okay. How about you, Peter? No. What are you having tonight? Fried potatoes, and mandarin oranges? Yep. That's it? Yep. Okay. I think you need to have a little ham or a little broccoli. One or the other you're going to have to choose. And how about you, Joe? What are you going to eat? My thumb's there. What? My thumb's there. What? <laughs> thumb's there. Farmer's ear? Yes. Yes. I'm some potatoes. Yep. You'll have potatoes. And, and mandarin oranges and ham? Mm -hmm. Okay, that That's sounds all. good. 